Today we're going to look at Aussie Tech Week episode 638, 27th of June. It's almost the end of the tax year, so I hope you got all your receipts ready and uh, go down and see your accountant next week. It'll all be happening down there. Get your refund and wet bamboo. Uh, yeah, so it is the 27th of June. How's all going? It's getting pretty cold around Australia, I think. Well, it's pretty cold up here on the Goldie. We've had a bit of rain the last couple of weeks, or well, the last couple of days actually, <laughs> and uh, and it's been pretty cold. We get about maximums of 16s and stuff like that. It's unheard of. Um, all right, we're brought to you this week by Aussie Techheads uh, Web Hosting, athwebhosting.com.au. Uh, operates on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, easy install Woom, Woom, Woomla, <laughs> WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, plus about 300 others if you want to. Forums, and uh, there's other blog software, and there's Zen carts, and there's a whole heap of scripts that you just click a button and they just auto install, and they're just ready for you to just go and uh, to. Uh, Go into the back end and fix it all up. Uh, startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company fast, easy, and direct with ASIC, Australia's easiest and fastest online company registration. Um, if you're an accountant or other professional, you're also able to brand all documents with your company name. Uh, ABNs, PAYG, GST, all that. Register it all at startnewcompany.com.au. And Aussie Byte. Jace is selling the, the uh, Android clock faces watch faces or whatever you want to call them if i can get one up there there we go uh, if you want to buy one it's uh if you use the promo code ath19 that's 33 percent off that's in the fitbit app gallery aussie bite clock face so there you go there's a link i'll put a link in the show notes for you if i don't already do that and you can go straight to that and get that uh get the watch face all right you can call us on facebook if you like uh, it's uh, 02801520888 and the meeting room number is get your pens 548 358 6358 I know too fast uh, and uh, you can listen to podcast tech podcast 24-7 back to back on the aussietechradio.com download the tune in radio app or uh, yeah I think that's the only way you can do it um, I know you can listen to the podcast on Spotify but I think that Tune in radio app is the Aussie Tech Radio. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds. Uh, thanks to Will and Warlock for stepping in last week. So I hope you guys are uh, a bit of a mi- mixing it up a bit, you know, it's different voices and stuff. It's always good to get uh, different perspectives and catch up with Will and Warlock every now and then. So it's uh, good stuff. All right. And this week we're back to back to normal with uh, Jordan and Joe. So I think we've got uh, Jordan to come off the line first. Here he is. Hey, Jordan. How you going? How are you? Yeah, you good. good. <laughs> You're busy in your. He's looking for a Microsoft uh, webcam driver. So yeah, not for the old one. I've got. I can't find it. No, yeah. I was actually. Um, I just had it muted because I. You started the show. I wasn't ready. I ran out and came back. I think we're ten minutes early tonight. We might be. That's good. I've because uh, that's all right. Because we got it. We'll finish. Try and finish it about a bit earlier too. Because I'm busy, busy, busy. I had a lot of encoding to do. As I was telling you before the show, <laughs> it's mass massive. Uh, and Joe, how you going, Joe? Yeah, I'm good, Glenn. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. What have you been up to these uh, last two weeks? Uh, well, I've still been working and uh, painting the house and stuff. Oh, yeah? Nearly finished? Uh, yeah, almost done. I've got three rooms done and uh, got the people coming in today to do some sanding. Oh, so that nice. Was good. Nice. So what what are you sanding? Like, what, why do you the need floor, sanding? Sanding, sanding? Sanding the timber floors, so that got all oh. post up today. Yeah, okay, nice, nice. And they looking good? Oh, yeah, mate. looks really good. looks brand new. Yeah, nice. Yeah, timber floors are really good. I like timber floors. Um, all right. Uh, where are we going to start? Look, uh, I think uh, Jason Warlock brought you up to date last week, so there's no point in going over maybe that week. But let's start. Let's try with Telstra finally scraps 1,800 mobile plans. Like, for starters, can you actually believe they had 1,000 or more than 1,800 mobile plans? Like, it's out of control but who would know them all like how's the you know you know when you uh, work somewhere like it's always drummed into you know your product how could you know possibly know 1800 plans 1800 products anyway yeah. so that, that, that's that, unbelievable how, how, how can you I mean you know it's hard enough to remember 80 of them 1800 yeah I know like I don't understand like what would they be like obviously there's just a few basic consumer ones but they must be like business ones with this and then business ones with that and business with this and minus that but a bit of the other and whatever it was just made up 1800 of them but anyway well, the- I, think I can think of is that there's a lot of legacy old plans out there and um i think um you know some going back even 10 or 12 years 15 years some plans that haven't been 
upgraded and, and they're still going to honour them. I think, doesn't the contract say that, you know, you have to honour the plan? Yeah, they probably uh, grandfather you across or continue on if, if you like. But because uh, that happens to to me when I was with the Telstra, which I'm finally free of Telstra uh, after after a long time. I got a credit back too after I cancelled and went to the NBN with someone else. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I used to, you know, your contract had run out and I, and you just kept on going on the same one. I suppose that's how they racked up 1,800, I guess. Um, people were just on the old ones and they just kept going. But, uh, but anyway, they're going to replace them with just 20. Can you believe it? From 1,800 to 20. So that's uh, getting a little bit easier. And I've got a little uh, little graphic here for those on the on the YouTube, if I can sh- get that showed. There we go. It's about, it a, looks like a, it lists the 19 plans and they've got one, the 20th plan is apparently some secret that they're coming out with later. But Telstra's made good on its promise, yeah, to scrap it down to 20. From this week, Australia, uh, from this week, Telstra will do away with lock-in contracts across all of its mobile plans. Uh, and they're claiming to be the first Australian telco to do that. Telstra also removed excess data fees, meaning if customers go over the limit, they will be shaped down to 1.5 megs. And for customers that have a 5G compatible device, access to the network will be free during a trial period until June 30 next year. After that, customers with small and medium plans will have, have to pay an extra $15 a month for 5G, while large and extra large customers will get access for free. So there you go. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. Look, they're, they're the plans. They're probably pretty stock standard plans. But interesting enough, they got rid of the the locking contracts, which that's been sort of going that way for I don't know maybe twelve months or more. You know, the the company seems to be now just giving you the phone out out on its own sort of contract. So you just so you can pay the phone off by itself rather than tied to the the actual plan. Um, and so if you leave the company, you just have to just pay the the phone contract out and not the plan contract. So that's good. And uh, yeah, and shaping, fair enough. I don't mind shaping, I guess, if you, if you use too much. Um, but yeah, the five the extra 15 bucks of 5G, I saw someone do a speed test in Sydney uh, on a, one of those 5G Samsung phones, and the down speed was like uh, a, a gigabit down, and real stingy on the up, only about 50 meg up, but got a gigabit down, which is awesomely fast. I don't know what you could download. Why would you want a, th- a gigabit down? You get a movie in about two seconds, but uh, other than that, but yeah, what do you what what do you think, Jordan? Any anything comments? Are you with Telstra or who are you with down there? I am with Telstra. Yeah, look, I've I've always I've always said to people, you get what you pay for. That's yeah. You know. So you're happy with it with them? Well, the amount of times I've I've swapped around and changed mm. from provider to provide provider and at some point I always end up going back to Telstra. I think most people I know have done that. They're like, oh yeah, we've got this cheap internet provider, we're going to try them out and then a couple of months later they're back at Telstra or they move house and they're back on Telstra or they just always seem to go back there. Hmm. I, I, I didn't go with them out of spite. Just that pure, <laughs> pure... But how many spite. times have you left Telstra and come back in the past? Oh uh, Yeah, I have done maybe once or twice. Hmm. Uh, with the internet I've always been pretty much with Telstra because it's been cable so I had no choice yeah. uh, but the mobile phones but, but at each time though they, they were the better deal like or, or the, the, the pros outweighed the cons for the price at the time because I, I, I uh, you know dug right right into it uh, yeah so yeah what about you Joe what, you're a little phone plan connoisseur uh, well I'm still with Optus um, I'm still on the 4G plan I'm like Particularly interested in going into the five G. I don't even have the phone for it to start off with. Would you pay an extra fifteen bucks just for five G? Well, no. It's like paying. Oh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, it's it's like when you're NBN. You know how you pay um, a little bit extra for the faster speed. I guess if you really need to, then you will. Otherwise, you won't. Hmm. And 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 I, I sort of guess that they're going to you know shape the, the the plans and shape the uh, the bandwidth in such a way that it. it you know, you're going to make you want to do it anyway. Yeah, well, I guess so. But yeah, but anyway, so that's that's good. So next time you go for a mobile phone plan with Telstra, you won't. Yeah, the only, the only thing I um, did you did they say what sort of data was allowed um, with these new five G plans? What sort of data they were they were talking about, like download data? Oh, look, I think I remember from a uh, probably a little while ago. I think it might have been 150 gig. So um, 
Yeah. Oh, well, what? What's this here? Justin, he's, he's on the Facebook. He's, he's telling us that the Aussie broadband had a DDoS service attack to Savo. Some, so, some, they had a full staff meeting today. Oh, right. Well, well, my internet's still going. I'm with the Aussie broadband. So, uh, nothing. All good here. So, that's good. A DDoS service attack. Well, that's not good at all. Uh, yeah, rightio. Cool. Well, that's uh, the Telstra story. And uh, what are you up to with stories, Joe? What do you got? Well, I was... um. I was looking at um, YouTube Music. Apparently, you now they they download. Uh, they're going to give you um, 500 songs download automatically. Um, the idea is that if you're going to be away from your internet connection for a short period of time, yeah, you can you can actually download via Wi-Fi um, for about 500 songs. Right. On onto your device. Onto your, this only works with Android at the moment. It's a it's a thing that they're introducing called smart downloads. And um, it works on the pro- on the on the basis of that whatever songs you've liked in the past or playlists that you've created, um, things of that thing, things of that nature. You know, you get to um, it, it. It picks up all those things and then starts downloading automatically different songs. Right. And yeah, it, it only works with premium subscribers. Obviously, mm. um, it's a feature for premium subscribers. Um, but I reckon it's great. I mean, if you're going to go on a, on a plane trip somewhere, I mean, who's who's got you know, CDs and and, yeah, uh, and records and, and tapes or whatever else anymore these days. No one does. Yeah. Right, so um, if, if you if you're going to go away and you're going to be on a plane trip, for example, and you want to listen to your favourite music while you're away or in the, in the middle of the ocean somewhere, I mean, granted, some ocean liners these days have got internet access, but how good is it? You know? Yeah, not very. And it's expensive. Yeah. So um, yeah. So they're introducing this um, smart downloads. And um, it, apparently, it, it works that you go in there to the settings and you start telling the, I don't know, according to how much space you have in your device. Yeah, right. How many songs you want to download up to up to five hundred, and then it connects on an, via Wi-Fi at night time, and it starts downloading it to your device. But so you couldn't do this with YouTube before, is that right? There was a, a feature called mix and match, but it's this is slightly different. Hmm. Does Apple? Yeah. You might not know, but did. Do you know, does Apple, can you still send your songs to the Apple cloud and then even if you've got a real dodgy copy of it, it when you listen to it, it comes back at full full pelt? I think that, that that's what used to happen with Apple. I, I'm not sure if it really, if it happens anymore. I mean, I have not used an Apple phone for a while. Mm. Yeah, right. I know uh, I was looking through, I was doing something, I was looking for video converting software today or th- through the week and something I didn't realise existed uh, it was uh, I, I come across this from this uh, any video converter place they also had this thing called Spotify converter where I, I'm guessing you can you know you, well, you download your DRM Spotify to your phone or to your computer and then this bit of software removes the DRM and lets you keep it so, oh wow, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I oh, know. I didn't realise you could do it, but I'm, I'm sure that's what the gist of it was. I was, I was pretty flat out. I didn't have a chance to read it. All. Other than that, or it's pulling the, the 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 file from somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. No, I think it's well, it was the it was the Spotify thing. I'll have a look and see if I can find it. You're talking about like the it gets the song and downloads it from Spotify. Is that what you're saying? No, I'd say you have to... Hang on, let me type this in so I can concentrate. <laughs> the converter. I, I do know that there is websites out there that allow you to download songs um, to... It wouldn't be legal, device, though. But, I, of course, it's not legal. But no, of course yeah. not. And it's probably pulling, you know, it's, it's probably pulling ripped MP3s from somewhere else. It's probably not even getting them from Spotify. Well, no, this, these are the ones that... Pulling them from you, other illegal servers. These are YouTube ones you, that, I've, that I've seen happening before. Um, you, you know, it's, it's as simple as... Um, I mean, if you Google it, you'll find it straight, pretty much straight away. But it's as simple as, you know, going to this site, putting the URL of the, of the, the, the song that you want to download. Um, or the video. Or the video. Yeah. And uh, it converts it over to MP3 or MP4 or whatever. Here it is, the Spotify Music Converter for Windows. Convert Spotify songs to DRM-free MP3s. Convert music files at five times faster and preserve lossless. Support batch conversion. Easy to use. Need, no need to install the Spotify client. So I, I guess that's what it's doing, isn't it? I th- yeah. I think it's just dragging files from externally. 
<laughs> Spotify Music Inverter would preserve 100% quality, blah, 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 blah. Easy to download, high, high conversion rate and convert five times faster. Yeah, well, that's, to me, that's on the surface, that's what it's, it's trying to do. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, Brett on the Facebook um, page says that he uses iTunes Match. So, I don't know, does anyone know what iTunes Match is? No, that was that one I was just talking about, I think. You know, oh, where, okay. where you, the songs sort of, you told Apple iTunes what song you had. And then it would come, even if you had a real dodgy, crappy, uh, thirty-six bit, you know, MP3 file. Uh, when you went to listen to it, it would be the full one hundred twenty-eight or whatever. I think that's what that iTunes match was. Oh, okay, no worries. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so that's uh, it was interesting that Spotify thing. If you're into that, just have a look. Uh, and Justin uses Handbrake for video converting. Yeah, I think yeah, Handbrake's Handbrake's good. That's oh, is that still around, Handbrake? Yeah, yeah, it's still around, it's still good. Is that, it's, it's, doesn't it's take doesn't take long either. It does it pretty quickly. Yeah, that's available because that was originally Mac, wasn't it? I think Handbrake. I don't know. It's been around for a while for PC. I've had it a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't use it very often, um, but yeah, maybe very, I maybe I could. Oh, There's oh, a few of those little old ones from way back that are, that are fantastic. Yeah, mm. I had to. You uh, just got to be careful with Handbrake though. If you're going to go and download it. Just watch out. I know it's 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 free software and everything, and I think it's even might even be open source. I can't remember, but just be careful of the of the you know when you install software and it says oh, and you click next 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 oh, next next, yeah. <laughs> and you don't realise that you've just agreed to have some ad software or other stuff installed at the same time as the application itself. Yeah, so be careful of that sort of thing. Yeah, there it is. They install they install other software on your computer oh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah, Windows. Yep, there we go. Because I had to do, I had to convert some uh, some uh, raw security camera footage. It came out of the the cameras as an MP4, but you know, wouldn't you know it? You, when you get to try and put it into like a video editing software, Mac and PC. Well, I tried it on Mac iMovie, and then I put it into my PC onto the Sony Movie Studio, and uh, it wouldn't wouldn't take these MP4s. So I had or well, forty hours of security camera footage. This bloke wanted me to uh, take forty hours. And scrunch it all, time lapse it down <laughs> to about ten minutes. You know, I took a, I took a, a video only the other day. I had to actually, I, I, I bought a. I think I told you I bought a Windows Surface, and I did a video of of me. The pen was faulty that I that I bought for off eBay, a, and a, just a, a third party pen. It wasn't working. And I took a video of me just writing on the Surface, showing how it doesn't work. It was about five six hundred meg when I finished. Yeah, right. And I chucked it into Handbrake. Yeah. Because they said, oh, we want it sent to us in email. We don't want you to post us a link. Can you send it to us in email? I'm like, I'm going to fit this whole video in an email. Anyway, sure enough, I pulled up Handbrake and the presets in there allow you to choose if you want it to be a web based video or a, a full 1080p, you know, DVD or whatever. And I just chose web based and it, it got it down to about 8 meg from 400. Yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And what was yeah, the quality like? It's only, the video only went for about a minute or two minutes or something, but it was like a 400 meg file converted down to 8 meg, and it was still at 70 to 720p or something. Did mm. you notice any quality? Um, no, it wasn't bad at all. No, no quality issues? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to have to look at that, but I'm, I'm finished. And the presets that, so. that are in Handbrake are great as well. So, Hmm. Because I know, mm. look, this little Sony Vegas movie studio thing... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just saw Justin's gone. He loves the Sony Vegas. I don't know about that. Uh, I've been trying to wean myself off it. I'm trying to. I want to go eventually to that hit film four. I think it is. Uh, the Sony Vegas has a lot of um, peculiarities, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't think it gives me the the quality output that I'm really after. Uh, I'm only so that. Well, this is what I do the YouTube videos in of the show, and that the quality comes out. I'm I'm not excited about the quality to be honest. What version have I got? It's version twelve, so probably two versions behind. But I'm going to have a look at the, this hit film four. I think because that's a that's a free, well, pretty much free. I'll show you this one too. Well, while we're talking video stuff, we'll get to some stories in a second. Uh, where is hit? Is it hit? Hit film, hit something like that. Hit film. I think it's something like that. hit film. Uh, hit film. This might be it. Let's have a look at this. This looks like it. Uh, 
So it's a free download. And then what happens is you can do like basic stuff with it. And then what, as you uh, get want to get do more ex- extravagant things, then you can buy the add-ons. And it's not too bad. It's um, apparently a lot of lot of good people use it. Burn the DVD, blah 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 blah. Is that is that the one? Oh, that's Ice Guys off. That's not the one. Hit film. Is this one? Is this one here? I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's been a week off. See, I've got brains gone to mush. <laughs> this must be. Yeah, yeah, this looks a bit better. So there you go. Accept all these. I'm I'm sick of all these sites now. You've got to accept cookies every time you get there. Yeah, that's getting annoying now, isn't it? Yeah, very annoying. <laughs> because now that gives them a reason to just. It, it just gives them a reason. You're accepting the cookie no matter what they do to it. Mm. It makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes in the cookies, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, if you like say originally they never told us that they were they could have been doing stuff to it. Now they're just getting your permission to do whatever they want to it. Yeah. I, yeah. I know. So yeah. And so, notifications is the other one too. The which one? They're always offering you. Would you like? Will you accept notifications from this website? Yeah. I know. Yep. I don't yeah. want notifications from any random website. Don't even <laughs> offer. <laughs> no. All right, let's get off uh, video editing. Uh, unless you've got any questions. Anyone, any any other comments on video editing? <laughs> no, just let us know how you go with Handbrake. I reckon you'll Oh, be... it's too late. I've already converted everything. So um, no, nope, put it in your little box of tricks for next time. I think you'll be, I think you'll be pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, okay, I will. Because I've got this. I bought it's a while. Simple to use as well. I bought a thing called Any Video Converter a while ago, and that's what I used. And uh, uh, it, it sort of because the video footage, the camera footage came down as you know, some of them were like little only thirty second files and two minute files. There's just hundreds of files, and uh, yeah. this this particular bit of software also joined them all up for me as well. You can batch convert too with um, yeah right with handbrake as well. Yeah, so uh, but anyway, well uh, I'll have a look at handbrake. It has been around for a while. I remember it from the other. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Joe's going to tell us about raspberries. Did you blow raspberries? it? Did you blow a couple? Stra- what about strawberries? Did you did you blow a couple, Joe? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, well I've only ever had the raspberry pie the first version, but now they're up to version four. So they're up to um, raspberry pie model B. Um, version four, right? Yeah, so it's just come out now, and it's around about a sixty dollar price tag, which I'm guessing is American uh, price. Um, and it's and it's still the same size uh, um, board. It's still a, a single board that that fits in the palm of your hands. So, but the the specs are pretty impressive from what I see. You know, it's got a, a one point five gigahertz uh, quad core processor in it. It's an ARM processor. Uh, it's a Cortex A72, and um, it, it, you can you can get them in either one gigabyte or in four gigabyte um, RAM. Um, it also comes with a gigabit Ethernet port on it, which is really good. They come in handy, and also it's got wireless AC built into it as well. Mm. It's a pretty good little uh, board, isn't it? It sure is. I mean, for the price, um, two uh, two HDMI ports. It's, it says there on the on yeah. what plans. That's right. Cool. Yeah, well, it, well, it's, two screens. That's right. If you there's two HDMI ports, and that's because um, you can either have uh, two 4K displays at 30 frames per second, or you can have just one um, one display at, at 60 frames per second. Ah, okay. That's yeah, awesome. right. Yeah. yeah. So you're right, Joe. That, that's sixty bucks. That's sixty dollars Australian. Oh, is that Australian? Yes. I thought it was the US. No, it's thirty five US, and uh, and it steps yeah, I'm up. I'm sure if you I'm sure if you jump on eBay, you'll get a package. Yeah, or well, there's a place where I think I bought mine from was the Australian Pie Reseller Core Electronics. Uh, mm. There'll be a link in the show notes. But yeah, they're going for fifty nine ninety five, sixty six ninety five, and ninety four ninety five. Apparently, the difference is just uh, more RAM. In, in that that's why the price I think up. in the old days with mine when I bought mine I had the version I think version 2 or 3 or something I can't remember I had um, a couple of 3's and it came you know for about 100 bucks and it came with everything it came with the, the, everything to put it together a control uh, like a remote control for your, for your TV or whatever Yeah. and it also came with the power adapter and the, and the, the housing and the casing and the heat sinks and and everything to put it all together yeah right. Well, so you you often get good packages if you look around. You will get all the extra bits to add to it. Mm. Did you have the bit about uh, 
I'm not sure if you've got the same story there or not, Joe, but uh, this one here c- goes on to say that the, the Core Electronics, who I just mentioned, they've got a desktop kit uh, for $219. Now, the kit comes with a 4 gig Pi version 4 with a keyboard, mouse, case, power supply, twin HDMI cables, and a 32 gig HD micro SD card. How much is that? $219. Shit. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? Can I say the shit word? Sorry. Yeah, only once though. Oh, twice then. Twice a per no, episode. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good value for that for a small board like that. Yeah, tell me about it. That's right. Um, yeah, it's not that hard to put on to put your, your Linux or whatever on it because I think I put you know I put the Kodi on mine. I haven't used my Kodi for a while. Uh, I just got sick of it buffering all the time. So I'm not. And you know the the where you go and watch your TV shows, they all change. But yeah, the look it was just pretty easy to put the the Linux on it, the Kodi on it. And it was yeah, it was nice and easy. Uh, yeah, I reckon this uh, this box here will be um, a good little surveillance box. You know, if you're having the two HDMI ports, you can you know hook it up to two different monitors and have uh, two cameras sitting off it and whatever else. It'd be, it'd be good. I mean, I could, there's a whole heap of stuff that I reckon you could do with it. Mm. Uh, Is there any good camera applications, security camera applications that work on ARM processors? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I haven't actually used it, but I'm just guessing that you could run your OS off it, but wait, Windows or Linux or whatever it is. Well, you can't run Windows off ARM. You can't? No. Okay, I thought there was a version that you could. Oh, there's the old RT version or something, wasn't there, Glenn, that I think was... Was the old uh, Windows RT, was that ARM? I can't remember. Hmm. Yeah. yeah I don't think you can put Windows on ARM. I think you can use the IoT, whatever Windows version. I'm just looking IoT. through here. It's got the uh, plus. It, it? So they've got rid of the power adapter now. You just use the USB C. Uh, the Pi downstream. Just the Pi Ethernet. Now it doesn't say if you can put Windows on it or not. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think any. It'll have to be the IoT Internet of Things version. You know the Windows IoT. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're probably right there, uh, Jordan. There probably is that one there that, that, that will run on it. You'll get. You probably get like, maybe some of the Linux ones on there. Um, but I think most Raspberries come with Raspberry Pi or the the little Linux version of Raspberry anyway, Raspberry Pi Linux or whatever it is. So mm. you can probably, it depends if you can get Linux applications. You probably, I have no doubt you could get security cam software. Oh, I'm sure you could. On Linux, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. In fact, I think there's even some dedicated distributions that ha- are built specifically for that. You know, like you have, you have Kodi, for example, which is kind of basically not Linux with just Kodi running. Everything it needs mm. just to get Kodi. And there's another one for a security camera one. I don't know what it's called. I do remember reading a brief about it. I can't remember what it's called. But well, that's the the version of Linux that's on the, the my Raspberry Pi. It's called it's called uh, something Core Elec or something like that, and it is yeah. branded just Libre enough Elec. Linux for Cody. Yeah, Libra Elec. That's the one. Yeah, Libra Elec. Who does? They're, they're probably the same guys that do that Libra Office. Would that be right or? Oh, I don't know. No, I think it's two. Might be two different things. I think. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's what I've got on my Raspberry is the Libra Elec. Yeah, well, I remember when I had my first Raspberry Pi. You could also overclock a, a slight bit yeah. if you put a little heat sink on it. And so, um, apparently, this new Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi Four is no different. It, it can still overclock it a little bit, um, but um, according to what uh, medium writer uh, Gareth Half or Half a Cree. He says that only after a few minutes that you've used it, uh, the entire board starts to feel warm to the touch, and that um, uh, as you start loading things up with it, you know, running programs or high-intensity, you know, games or, or whatever it is that you want to work work with on it, um, it starts to get hot. Um, so it's probably a good idea to add those little heat little heat sinks that they put on the CPUs. I'm not, I'm not sure if anyone. Is there a they, done yeah, they come with the, in the packages. Most of those little packages you buy come with like little heat sinks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you, know, you really probably shouldn't be doing much more with a little Raspberry Pi. You probably only really want to use it for like I don't know, Cody. 
But my, when I well, bought, yeah, but I mean, you're in te- like like um, um, Joe's saying about heavy, intense games and overclocking it, mm. and you're well, really yeah. utilising that that CPU and pushing it hard to get it hot like that, aren't you? The case, yeah, like- I mean, it, it's probably not much different to our phones. You look at our phones. Most of our phones that we're running today that are running Android, you know, 1.4 quad processors and. Yeah. You know, so they're pretty much the same sort of thing, and people are playing games on them. You know, I mean, sure, you've got some of them that are 1.8, 1.9, and then you can go up to 2.2, 2.3, 2.5 processors, uh, quad core. So, um, you know, if you worth, putting, um, worth putting your Android on, on yep. the Raspberry, see if you can do yeah, that. Maybe. You might be able to run Chrome on it, I'm not sure, um, Chrome OS on it. Yeah, uh, who knows? But I just have you say, heard of the um? Have you heard of the QB is it QB board? Have you heard of that, Glenn? No. QB QB board C U B vaguely. QB board that one I think is very similar to the Raspberry, but it runs Windows. Well, I was gonna with when I got my case for my Raspberry Pi. It, I'm not sure if you if this is what you were saying before, but that the heat sink was built into the case, and then when you put it all together, it sort of just lowered itself down onto yeah. the. It's like a little. Yep. Yeah, little thing in the case. It's part of the case. And, uh, yeah, but no, look, mine just goes, mine stays on. I don't, I haven't even looked at it for probably a couple of weeks or more. Just, it's just yeah, there. My, I, I, you know, I was always concerned that the little SD cards would, would eventually ride out and fail and you have to go and buy a new one. But I suppose if, you, if you're not updating it too often and you're not really storing much information mm. on it, you're not going to wear out the SD card. No. I mean, I use Plex for mine, so... Um, through, I still use Kodi, but I use Plex through Kodi, which is a really good plugin. But it it kind of Plex runs on another computer externally, and it collects all the metadata for all your stuff, and and stores it there. So that Kodi's not actually storing any data at all for me. So the the little SD card's barely getting written at all. It'll last forever. Yeah. I don't know if you <laughs> only have a reading from it. I don't know if you had to do this, but uh, this could be a tip if you have never done a Cody before, is that when you put the SD card in, you've got to format the SD card, but you've got to format because apparently it comes when you buy them off the shelf. They've got two petitions on them or something. You've got to format it, so it just is one petition. You've got to get rid of that other petition, otherwise it doesn't yeah, work. Libra Elect should sort that out, though. When, uh, well, when I did it, no. I had to download another SD formatter or something. I had to mm. do it like that, but, yeah, but I know what you mean, Glenn. You have to download a another um, file which transforms, uh, you know, transfers the uh, the formatting of it to a specific uh, yeah, it's SD format or something. It's called mm. yeah, specific yeah, format for you then to be able to install the OS on. I think I've got it here on mine. I've had to use it as well. I just can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. That's all. It's called. I probably could it tell might you. just be simply SD formatter. But that's I think a, it is something like, like I did that. get stuck there. SD card formatter, it's called. Cool. There you go. Well, there you go. That's what it is, yeah. I can open it and maybe give you a, give you a, a, a maybe there's some, a, a, an about box on it. Well, it'll save SD, you some, SD card formatter, I think is what it's called. It'll save you some time because I remember I got stuck on that for about half an hour. I'm thinking, why isn't this working? <laughs> SD card formatter. That's it. That's what it's called. Yeah. And Developed I've by Tuck, Tuck, Tuxera or whatever it's called. Yeah. I've also used that particular program for formatting USB sticks as well. Yeah. 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 What's this one? SD card formatter? Yeah, that's it. What's that SD one? card formatter. But, and it said it's made by Tuck, Tuxera or something. Oh, this one's SD Association. I'd probably that's work. it. No, that's the one. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's the same logo as I'm looking at here. Windows, Mac. <laughs> There you go. So you yeah. can download that and uh, format those little SD cards to your heart's content. You don't always have to, but sometimes you, you're right. If you've, if you've installed Libra like a couple of times or something and the card's getting a bit confused, sometimes you just got to format it and then start again. Yeah. Now, who, who likes the command prompt and PowerShell? Does everyone love those sort of things? If you're a Linux user, yeah. <laughs> well, after... I don't know. How, I don't know. Many, many years. I think Microsoft has has debuted the new Windows CLI. So Microsoft has developed delivered its first taste of the new Windows command line experience. Really? Yes. The, when did they do this? This week. <laughs> so they announced a new tool called Wait for it Terminal in early <laughs> May. <laughs> in early May. Too. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. That's what it's said. You wait for it. It's called what? <laughs> Terminal. <laughs> so in early May, uh, oh, early May, 
sorry, so last <laughs> month, it's promised a new, modern, fast, efficient, powerful, and productive terminal application for users of the Command Prompt and PowerShell people. Among other promised features, look, I've got a screenshot, and look, at look, it looks pretty nice if you want to deck it out. What like does that. it look like? Just oh, it's got a background. Black, no well, black screen. It's got a background on it. You'd probably be able to pick your own background, but more importantly, is it's tabbed. It's a tabbed interface, so you can have different windows open at the same time in tab formatting. So that's really good. So you can have a PowerShell here, command line here, command line here, command line, and then PowerShell all, all open Hasn't at once. Hasn't always been there, though, somewhere in the background? You just have to look for it? Oh, there's always been, yeah, there's always been a command. I've never used the command system to, to connect to any external PowerShell places or anything, though. Like, no, you know, I like, use something else for all that. I use a thing. I use Putty usually. Yeah. Yeah, but like even when, but I've used the command just for mucking around. I don't know, just doing some uh, networking stuff that you have to do. You know, oh, if you want to check then. out your network cards and stuff, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, good. So but can you connect? Can you use the Windows PowerShell to connect to you know like a, a Linux SSH shell or whatever? And I don't know if you can. I know you can with Mac. You can bring up the terminal in Mac, and then you just I think you look. You know, not, you type in root at, root at whatever address you want to go to, and then click yeah. enter. Yeah, I'm not log. sure about this one. I know I don't think you can do it in the command prompt. Uh, but I'm not a big user of PowerShell. I can use the command. Well, neither am I. Not in Windows anyway. Yeah, but I know. Yeah, that's why me, you, and I just use that putty, and that just that's nice and easy it goes pretty good yeah, I use putty and you can set up tunnels and all sorts of things with it it's oh I don't go that crazy I just log in and that's all I do <laughs> so uh, yeah so tabbed interface lets users run multiple terminal sessions the addition of graphics and proper typography to improve readability uh, Microsoft promised terminal would appear in the northern summer and it has and it's out now it, and that promise was made good Saturday oh okay so what's this week what's it saying up there May this is two different Dates. Have you ever? Oh, uh, announced ever, it in May. Available last week. This week. Oh, okay. Yep. Have you ever installed the Linux flavors within Windows? I've never done it. No. Nah. I wonder nah. if what command that gives you. Apparently, you go to the App Store, for example, the window, the, the Microsoft Windows App Store, and you can type in like whatever flavors there are of Linux, like Ubuntu or whatever, and you can install it straight in Windows. Right. And 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 then it works within Windows. Right. Like a almost like a virtual machine but kind of more in more integrated mm. I no, of... never tried that. Yeah. No, no, i've I... never tried it but uh, I, microsoft released it a, a, a few years back now with their windows 10 and there's been a few other editions of uh, of linux flavors that have been added to the um to the list and you can so you can do full you know full uh command line like linux command line stuff all within windows mm, right Hmm. Yeah, so this this would be good. So what I did was I, I went, I, I downloaded it because you got to download it from the Windows Store. So I went and downloaded it from the Windows Store, and uh, it's in a it's in a beta mode or a, a preview mode. <laughs> it works, so um, you know, it's all right. So all right, yeah. So that's that's the old shell. Um, all right. What about? Did you have these stories, Jordan, or are you just just? I got a couple of a couple of them. Yeah, uh, probably. That's why I was a bit quiet in the first fifteen minutes of the show. I was still sitting here reading them because I hadn't read them myself yet. Um, I had one. I think I've got, I've got them spread out, out over two computers. Hang on a second. This one here. I read this kind of really early this week. I saw this. I was just out of curiosity. I was reading it for my own self, and then I thought, oh, this is interesting. I have to read this to the boys. It says you're a mutant oh. from crooked teeth to a spike on the back of your skull. How modern life is is warping your skeleton. All right. Modern life um, has us working longer hours uh, than, than, sorry, longer, longer, <laughs> I'm stuttering tonight, aren't I? Longer hours than ever and, and starting at our bones 24-7 with dire consequences for our brains and bodies. Why from do you crooked, crooked teeth? teeth? To, hey? Why crooked teeth? I'm getting to it. From crooked okay. teeth to narrow elbows, and the way we live today is terrifying con consequences for the way we are built. Um, our phone obsession means we grow spikes on the back of our skulls. This is a couple of little pictures here. I probably should... I wonder if I can paste this link in t to you, Glenn, just in... No, in, don't. Just in the chat over here. No, don't worry. It's too hard. But I've got a picture. <laughs> I've got some pictures. <laughs> Have you got some pictures? I've pasted it in the uh, Zoom chat anyway. So if you think you can click on it, um, 
Now I've lost the page. That, that'd be right, wouldn't it? Teeth. Yeah, and then narrow elbows. Humanity's elbows are shrinking because our skeletons are becoming more fragile. Elbows. We're more likely to suffer dental crowding and crooked teeth than, than we were 200 years ago. And we constantly tap at our smartphones and it's changing the way our brains interact with our fingers. Right. Uh, I, I think you might be looking at the same page, actually. Here are some of the weirdest ways of the body's blah, blah, blah. So crooked teeth. The way we eat has changed drastically in the past 200 years, whereas our food was once touched. This is I don't need to read all the crooked teeth bit. I just wanted the... Where's the spiky? Here it is. Spiky skull. Alarmingly, spiky growth up to three centimetres long are being... Are being are beginning to appear on people's heads. These lumps, which are uh, extremely rare 100 years ago, just out from the lower back of the skull, just above the neck. Oh, that's this it one. Caused by our obsession with smartphones, which has us staring at screens for up to four hours a day. Ah, it's climate change. That's not, that's not technology. <laughs> no, they're saying it's because you've got your head. It says this means we're carrying... Uh, that means we're, we're... Is it craning our necks a lot more? Right. Okay. Craning our legs a not, lot more than we used to, forcing our bodies to compensate. Um, I've been craning for 20 years and uh, and only in the last decade, increasingly, I have been discovering that my um, patients have this growth on their skull. This must be a doctor that's written this. Well, I'll there just you go. It. The lump is a build-up of bone where the neck muscles meets the head. Uh, it grows up. Uh, it grows to help our neck support the weight of our noggins as we... Um, ogle our gadgets. <laughs> I can't even read tonight. I'm terrible. Yeah, uh, right. Well, there so you go. They're kind of saying because we've always got our heads down, that we're growing a spike at the back right. of our skull. I don't know if you can feel around the back of your skull, and there's like a just at the bottom of your crown, yeah. there's like a, a little a little lump. I've got one, but it's probably they reckon it, it's up to three centimeters on some people or something. Mm. Well, there you go. Um, good. I thought that was just a bit of <laughs> interesting, yeah. a weird story for you. Well, I've got a quick one here about Apple Mac. Uh, this was pretty important because they've recalled apparently thousands of batteries uh, out of the MacBook Pros. They issued a global recall of all 15-inch uh, MacBook Pros sold between September 15 and February 17 for fears that the batteries could explode. The recall offers only affects a specific model. Uh, there's a link in the show notes if you want to go and see if your one if your model is one of those affected. But again, battery issues like they're they're just everywhere. Uh, users, uh, if affected, Apple recommends to stop using the device immediately and contact Apple for a free battery replacement, which can take one to two weeks. Uh, the ACCC, which is responsible for recalling faulty products, called for greater safety provisions as last year after recalling 4.5 million items in 1718. That's a hell of a lot. 4.5 million Crazy, items. Crazy, isn't it? I don't know. But then, would you say, is that 4.5 million individual items or 4.5 million uh, products? As in, like, so would would you call... Say, no, the know, items, probably. Yeah, because say, say there's, uh, I don't know, 500,000... MacBook Pros out there, and they all get recalled. So that's five hundred thousand. Is that part of their four point five? That's million? Five, and that would be five hundred thousand items, wouldn't it? Well, you think, yeah. But still, that's like four point five million. So it would be five hundred thousand brands. Is that what you mean? Well, yeah. Why well, that? Remember when I bought that phone? Phone from Kogan, the charger blew up in my face. Mm. You know, it's um, yeah. Sent that one back quick, smart. But blew, like, as you plugged it in, it went bang, sparks, everything in your in your face. <laughs> Uh, That's or, crazy, you know. Samsung copped it, didn't they, when their phone exploded on a plane mm, with their battery? Yeah, well, that's right. And it's, it, you'd think it would open or, or put a spotlight on, on the battery industry a bit more. Mm. Anyway, more care needed by the looks of it. Try to cram too much into too small a space. Uh, what else you got, Joe? Any more? That's it for you. You're out. That's it for me this week. All right. I've, well, I've got one that just... Was a, a little story that I was looking at. Um, right. I can't think of now what it is. It was uh, something to do with these artificial intelligent robots. It's, it's uh, hit the wayside now. I just die, um, the, um, because of the Google Assistant that's taken over. The, but I just can't think. It was one of those little robots that wiggle and the eyes and... Right. Know, if you, Googly eyes. Yeah, I just can't think now what the name of it is, but that's all gone now. Apparently, they've stopped development on that. Right. Okay. 
Um, what well, do- I think uh, speaking of devices, Glenn, was it Xiaomi or Oppo or both of them? This re- this this. Have you got a story on that? No. Both of them week released uh, ca- under screen cameras in their phones, so you can't see the camera. They don't have oh. to have the notch cut out. Did you read that story? Right. No, I ha- I did hear something about. Uh, yeah, it's some hidden camera, but is that what's going on? Okay, right. I have kind of got a story here, but it's not the one I wanted to read, so I haven't read it. I'm a bit, I'm not quite brief with it, but it was basically, yeah, it's something to do with the pixels or something, and, and the way it goes transparent or something under the screen. So, and I think Xiaomi have have got it, but Oppo may have one as well. They're, they're yeah, just okay. a, nice. So no more notch at the top of the, the phone with the with these oh. cheap Chinese phones. They're getting they're getting in front of Samsung and Apple if they can get rid of the notch. They are. Well, we've got uh, comments on. And the Xiaomi's Facebook. also got a watch, I think. A smartwatch. Yeah, right. Yeah, they might have too. It's, that's just come out as well. Uh, so. Justin, Justin's on the on the Facebook said about your little notch in the back of your skull. That's our our inbuilt five G antenna. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andrew on the Facebook says Google gave away free home minis to Google One users today. Geez, they are giving away heaps of these minis, aren't they? Yeah, and there's you know there's so many of them for sale secondhand on the Facebook shops. I reckon they they just they're just getting out in front of everything because they know they've got Alexa, you've got the Apple HomePod, they've got all these all these ones out in the market. But like you look the Spot Spotify free mini, I got one. Telstra free mini. Mum's getting one, and then and then Andrew's gone. But free. it's also making their their AI smarter if they've got more mm. more devices out there using it. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, and course, they, yeah, and the Pixel Four is coming out apparently is the same. Yeah right. Yeah, and okay. everybody's jumping on the bandwagon for that for the uh, the, the uh, um, Google Assistant and everything as well. Uh, and this my last story for this week looks something like Woolworths is expanding their scan and go smartphone shopping trial now I never really heard of this scan and go I can't remember it anyway but anyway apparently they've got this scan and go in selected supermarkets where you can go around and uh, pick the, the item off the shelf scan it with this app and then as you walk out you just tap it on some machine like you know on the train tap it on the machine and it just automatically comes out of your credit card and, and away you go you don't have to check out so, well, that is the checkout, you know, they're not the quick one like that. So, uh, just to get rid of a few more hard workers. Well, yeah, that's right. So, it's available just to, to download. take a few more jobs uh, with artificial intelligence, taking more jobs. Yeah, the app's available to download uh, for uh, for uh, Play Store. It's available to download on the app and Google Play Stores. App users must be Woolworths Reward members and will need to upload an accepted credit or debit card. Uh, they said that the trial has been proven, the 10-month trial at Double Bay has been proven successful. The technology can also be used at four Woolworths metro stores, Pitt Street, Met Centre, George Street, York Street in Sydney. In addition, customers of Woolworths renewed full-line supermarket in Mona Vale. Mona vale. Whatever the, a renewed full-line supermarket is, I've got no idea. But uh, on Sydney's northern beaches. So... So it looks like things are yeah moving along there with Woolies. I don't know. So you don't think that's a good idea, Jordan? Is that a good idea? Or you you're, you're off it? Oh look, I think all technology is great, you know. But you you got to at some point stop and think, you know. Well, yeah, you you need human interaction somewhere. <laughs> you no, know, I keep I keep saying it to people, what collar jobs are next? You know, yeah. To come off to you know, it won't it won't be long, and you know, artificial intelligence will, will take the job of a lawyer. You know, like. You can't get better, you know. Like, you know, like they know that they can research law a mm. lot quicker than, they, than the human can. You know, it's just these white collar jobs are next on the line, I reckon. But can these AIs? Can they reason? Yeah, is that is that where you where they might? No, they're not as hot. Some of them, some of them aren't as good looking as the real ones. I don't reckon. <laughs> and what do you what do you what about you, Joe? You, you know, you gotta to go to the shopping centre to check out the checkout chicks, not to check out the virtual machines and the AI, don't you? Yeah, check out bots. Um yeah, Joe, what do you what do you reckon? You be you looking forward to the day where well you're in Sydney, you could go to one of these stores and have a go. Oh look, I, I don't my phone actually can't do that because I don't have that feature on it. But if I if I did have it, I, I would um, I would rather talk to somebody at the counter and, and interact with them rather than um yeah. you know, Walk past with a phone. I mean, sure, there's 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 pluses and minuses for everything. I mean, they're supposed to you know, make bring things cheaper and everything for you. But I, I don't know. I, I'd just rather have I think the, the virtual personal stuff. interaction. I think that the virtual 
stuff that they've got now is pretty good as it is. But I agree with you, Joe. I think that, you know, you've got, you've got to have some interaction somewhere in your life, you know. Mm. I think it's stale, isn't it? Well, and the jobs, the jobs that are, have been lost, you know, you think you get them. Every time I go to Coles, I'm, I'm just as bad. I go and use the virtual machines. To buy my stuff, yeah, you know, the automatic checkouts or whatever automatic they call. checkouts. Yeah. No, I, I never use those calls automatic but, checkouts. But there's people that do that in, insist on going to the aisle and using a checkout person just because they, they, you know, they support good Aussie jobs. Mm. They don't want these machines to take over the workforce. Well, you know, bus drivers, taxi drivers, they're all next off the line, aren't they? You're going to hop in a car soon. There won't be anybody in there to drive it. No. Yeah. What about that story we did the other week about the the, the helicopters? You know, the flying yeah. Ubers. Yeah, posties posties are going to go as well. They're going to have, you know, drones dropping off your deliveries for you. Yeah. So much for the so much for the postie. Ah, oh, it's all it's all going. Is it? What Pretty are we going to do? Sad in a way. It's awesome as it is to have that technology. It, it is sad in a way. That notch so. on the back of our head's going to get bigger and bigger. I yep. can see it. All this all the these more, robots yep. around. <laughs> we won't be doing anything. We'll be, just become lazy. Well, we're lazy now. And you know, with all the stuff you've got to store online, Microsoft OneDrive ha- has is setting up a, a new section on their OneDrive called Personal Vault. Have you heard of that? No. What is that doing? That's going to be a separate section within OneDrive that you can apply a pin pin number or fingerprint or face scan mm. to or two two factor authentication or something where you might want to store those extra sensitive. Uh, files like ID and things like what, that. What does that What does that say for the OneDrive security? It's not good enough, so you, they're going to have to a uh, more secure section. Is that what they're saying? Oh, it's kind of yeah. They're kind of basically saying that they've got their normal security, the normal for all your photos and everything else. But if there's so anything, good enough. If, you're a, if you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable and you want something a little bit more full on. Um, don't put it in the cloud. Separate, it's a separate section. Or don't put it in the cloud. <laughs> I don't put anything in, in the cloud. But they're saying it's an extra section. I mean, look, it's more inviting. I must admit it's more inviting. But doesn't Microsoft already have two, two-factor authentication to log into their system mm. now anyway? Yeah. I think well, you can, yeah. At most things these days got two, two-factor authentication or multi-factor mm. authentication, whatever you call it. Mm. A lot of things. But now they're saying it'll have just a separate section it's called OneDrive Personal Vault that requires another method of authentication to access it. Mm. I, I'm, yeah, I know. They like, suggest it might be useful if you have digital copies of your ID or travel insurance, car home documents, for, for instance. You can scan in documents directly to the Personal Vault through the OneDrive app. Mm. Bypassing perhaps less secure parts of your phone, like the camera roll, you can capture photos and videos with the app too, and send them straight to the personal vault. Um, I'd like to know the numbers, say the stats on how many people, say in Australia for argument's sake, actually do have two-factor authentication. Because could you like you know how hard was it to get people to use ATMs? How hard was it you know to to get people to I don't know use Centrelink online and all these things like. I oh, I still have older family members who refuse to do their banking online and stuff like that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Still I, to I, this day. Yeah, but I just like to know the stats because a lot of these sites, like a lot of places now, you do need that. You don't get a choice. It's just two FA or bust. You know, if you don't have it. But like all, most, a lot of people probably can't handle two factor authentication. You know, it's too confusing to have the extra app and yeah. yeah. On some sites, I'm scared to put it on in case I I forget something and get it wrong and then be locked out forever in a day. Mm. So, um, yeah. What do you think? It's about pretty scary, people? isn't it? Really. But yeah. you know, the more the, the more and more we evolve, the more data we're keeping online. People are, are becoming more more and more complacent um, about where they're storing their data. Yeah. More like they're just like you know, gone are the days of when we used to say, "Don't put anything on the internet you don't want people to know about," but. No, I mean people are using just places like Facebook and Instagram just as their places to store their photos. You know, it's funny because just why not? Yeah, just as you mentioned that, it's because uh, because like any bit of if my name or address appears on any bit of paper, I shred it. Right, it just doesn't. Yeah. Nothing leaves this house with my name or address on it. Uh, but everything's up in the internet. But I get I get this shredding from my grandfather who used to burn everything. <laughs> he yeah, said, he said name and address. Okay, bundle it up and once a week goes down burns it. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. My but, wife still does it. She yeah. Still, she still yeah. refuses to a, um, have any old old phone bills, anything like that. Yep. Yeah. Guards them. 
What do you do, Joe? I was listening to a security podcast during the week, um, and not many people are aware of it, but when they say that, you know, Google says you can turn off your location and, and where your uh, location services and all that are turned off, mm. in actual fact, they're still tracking you. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's so it, although you push that, that lever across to say, look, don't track me, don't, don't show my location, it's, it's been documented that it still does that anyway. Mm. Yeah. So, um, it might just not be as full on, but there is still the basics. It's like when you're installing Windows, it says, do you want to, do you want to ha send diagnostic information to Windows? And you click it off and it says no, and then highlights in yellow underneath, only basic information will be sent to Microsoft for account. <laughs> so it doesn't actually turn it off. Yeah. But like Justin's brought up another one here, Facebook and their Libra Fleur digital currency, Facebook bank, no thanks. Um, PayPal's good enough for him. And look, I guess it, no, it, you're right. <laughs> because like, why do you want Facebook in every aspect of your life? Like, look at the crap that they're going through now and and all this rubbish about how they got to take down these some videos and they're, they're not going to take down others, but then they're getting in trouble for taking some down, getting in trouble for not for taking some down. Like, it's just a big mess. It's a big mess. There's no way you'd want to put your money there as well. Like, no way. Um, no. I think I, I think it's going to come down to Facebook, to Google. They're all going to get split up. If they don't do it themselves, the government will split them up. The US government will split them up. They're just too big. Like, Google is... Uh, it's a mammoth. It's a mammoth organisation, and they've got so much information on all of us. And they can, you know, the, the old saying, "Information is power." You know, so uh, yeah, and it's and it's valuable. Yeah. That's the problem. All the information they collect is sellable, and they make they make just as much money out of our information as they do all of their advertising. Yeah. Well, well, their business model is not to provide a free search for us. By by. Their business model is to collect our information so they can on sell it to other people to make money. Isn't there a um, isn't there a, a Facebook page or a Google page or something like that that allows you to go and see what they know about you? I've, I've read somewhere you can look up and see what maybe it was Facebook. You can look up it's and right, see. There is. You can you can download it. Google has a, a page there which you can download everything. That, and even even Facebook does have the same same feature. You can download all the data that they have on you. Hmm. So you can see exactly what they know, but what they actually tell you is on that list that they know would have to wouldn't be all of it, surely. I remember years ago, before the internet was so fast, you know, someone did that. Uh, was one of the stories, and yeah, the I think Facebook ended up sending them a CD with all their stuff on it. So um, yeah, it'd be all download these days. But anyway, and then you and then you die, and you don't give your Facebook password to anyone, and it stays on there forever. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we were talking about a few weeks ago. When do these accounts just drop off? Like, when are they going to say, "Well, okay, uh, this guy's been dead for three hundred years"? Um, maybe we've still got his. We still got his bank details. If anyone needs them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that might uh, do us. Crazy, all. isn't it? That is very crazy. And um, uh, Google. I had one more quick one. Google um, is adding offline ability to access Google Drive files offline via the web, which I don't really use a lot of Google Drive, but I didn't know that they didn't do that. So although you already have the ability uh, doing this using the using the backup and sync desktop software, you'll soon be able to do it via the web browser too. But it is only through Google uh, Google Chrome. Mm. Well, uh, you've always so. been able to do that though. Sorry? You've always been able to do that though. You can always access your Google Drive by your Chrome browser. It says that new functionality is similar to to that currently offered in Google Docs, uh, Google Docs sheets and slides, and that offering editing has been around for ages, but it's now more powerful as it includes any files in the Google Drive. Right. Google says it includes PDF files, images, Microsoft Office documents, and more via well, via the Chrome browser. So you're not just going to be doing Docs; you're going to be doing photos, PDF files, and everything as well. Yeah, I think they've had that before. I mean, I've used the, I've used the PDF viewer and the PDF document thing on the Google Drive before. I've used the Google Photos editor a few times. So it's not just going to be just maybe a file browser online. I don't know. Do they have a file browser online well, for, your, for your actual Drive. files? Yeah, in Google, uh, Google. Well, that's how you access Google Drive. But I think I think that's what it's saying is it's going to be made available offline. Yeah. So, so that's the that's the ticket. So you're not on your computer. 
So how does that going to work? The internet. Does this show give you any indication how that's going to work, Jordan? Uh, let me read it. I just well, kind a, of. I think well, the, Google is adding offline saving options to files on Google Drive. So you're right. It says Google is giving users the ability to access Google Drive files offline via web browser. You already have the ability to do this. So we read that bit, uh, and we read that bit. Okay. Um, so what's probably fantastic what's... for anyone who needs to access files on the move while traveling, commuting, or simply just away from the, from a stable internet connection, according yeah. to the Google blogs. So uh, maybe feature is in beta at the moment, um, and we'd imagine it won't take long before it's out there for all users. It's worth noting that the offline functionality of Google Drive will only be available via Google Chrome, and you won't be able to use other browsers to access the settings. It's not currently supported in Chrome OS, though the company says it's working on that too. So that's yeah, so at the moment you can do it through the backup and sync program that Google supplies yep. you. So you, so you synchronise your files to your computer, then you can go offline and use them. That's right. But now this way, they're saying it must be just some, be all automated syncing and offline syncing and storage through the browser rather must than be so, so just it. using an, Yeah, so instead of using an app, it'll synchronise yeah. into the temp system of yeah. your browser probably. But I've been trying to move away from Google just quietly. Um, yeah. No, I've been since I told you about Office Online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't really used that. Well, I've got Office on the desktop, so I don't really worry about Office I just, online. Yeah, I just mean getting those basic word editing and stuff online. But yeah, yeah I've been, I've been, I've been instead of Google. I've been happy with my OneNote. I've been enjoying my OneNote, and uh, I thought you went off to another to-do list. No, nah, yes, I did. I went to Trello for me to-do list, but OneNote for my notes. I love it. It's just like Evernote. But OneNote does to-do lists as well, and you can. Oh no, not as good. No, OneNote's a note keeper, not a, a lister. I tried listing in OneNote and it was, bleh. but um, yeah. But anyway, let's uh, let's get out of here. You got anything else, Joe, to to say? You got any comments on any of that? No, that's all. All right, cool. Well, uh, I just just quickly so I can finish up these. I had another quick one. Samsung's rumored to be releasing a fold, another foldable phone that's going to work the other way. The other way. Right. Yeah, flip phone. So, kind of clamshell kind of way. Right. Yep. It's still, uh, it'll suffer. So the they're same. still they're still bringing out their Galaxy Fold, but they're rumored to have another one coming out in 2020, which folds the other way. Right. So you can look that story up if you're interested. And the other one is Instagram's considering removing their um, th- well, not removing, but hiding their like button. Why? Because they say that it's it's causing problems because people really rely on how many likes they get for their post and things like that. Oh my Bully. god! Okay, bullying and you know like down likes and up likes and stuff like that. They're making it harder and harder for you to want to use it, doesn't it? So they're kind of saying, well, if we if we hide the like button, it, it won't be that you won't people will still be able to like stuff, but they just won't be a, a counted the numbers. More... <laughs> The more we pander these people that can't run their own lives, the 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 the, the worse this problem's going to get. Like, if you don't get five likes, who cares? Yeah, but they're like, saying it's going to help with bullying and oh, stuff. On having that's just it on rubbish. Play. That's rubbish. It's rubbish. No, they're saying it's a massive change, but they're doing it for. They're they're considering it. Oh, I'm sick of it all. I'm sick of all this rubbish. <laughs> all right, <laughs> let's get out of here. But I'm if like, you don't get enough likes, Glenn, don't you feel sad? Want to yeah. want to go out and be upset and. Have well, a cut, cuddle your well, wife and say, no one likes me. Yeah, well, I've done 600 episodes of uh, podcasts and <clears throat> I think I should have got more likes. That's it. I'm going to go and neck myself. Well, we got, you know, we got a few likes tonight, so that's pretty good. Oh, I'm happy now. I'll calm down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, well, James just popped up and said he's going to see you next week. Is he coming he over? Will. Is- he will be, yes. Zess, we'll see you on the 4th. Is that the 4th, is it, next week? Let me have a look. It is. All right. We'll see you then, Sean. Mate. Good stuff. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks for jumping in and uh, seeing us on the Facebook. Don't forget to get us on the YouTube or the iTunes or wherever else you want to listen to us on the Aussie Tech Radio. And uh, we'll say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, Joe. See you next time. See you later, guys. Goodbye, Jordan. See you next time. And goodbye. Ciao for now. Goodbye to you too. We'll see you next time. And as always, oh, go the Blues and go the Sharkies. See you. <laughs> Bye.